football fans and welcome to La Liga Loca Africa, a show bringing you the best of Spanish football news and insights, all from an African perspective. I'm your host, Julia Stewart. Great to be with you for this episode. Here's the starting lineup. In this episode, we chat all things La Liga with our expert panelists, former footballer and podcaster Mbolelo Tinta and Kurt Buckerfield from Soccer La Duma. Later on, we get two fans rolling out their shin pads, protective face masks on, and keeper gloves out as they battle it out for the big La Liga prize in our fan quiz. La Liga continues to bring fans together across the African continent with watch parties, with the feature match being the Madrid derby. Fans were entertained throughout the night with a spicy encounter, treated to plenty of food and drink, and some lucky fans even won prizes courtesy of La Liga official sponsors like Puma. Now it's time to get stuck into our chat for this episode, and these are our expert panelists. Kurt Buckerfield from Soccer La Duma is alongside me, and Mbulelo Tinta, former footballer and now podcaster. Let's start with the reigning champions of Spain and Europe, and now the world, Real Madrid. Listen, Julia, I told you the beginning of the season is this team's going to be unstoppable, all right? Is great teams know when to turn it on. Uh, and I don't want to talk about Barcelona too much because I think they started too early, but they're young, the energy is there. Great teams know when to turn it on, right, Kurt? Yeah, like, yeah. like you, you, you press sure. when you press, not gear six all the time. I think Barcelona have done that. Yeah, and I, I think that with, with Real Madrid and Ancelotti specifically, his man management is second to none in world football. And I think that that's what um, you know, he's often praised for. I think Jurgen Klopp recently said he was the best man manager in world football. And to get the best out of those high profile players, but then also bringing in the younger guys like Vinicius, like Rodrigo, having them play regularly and contribute, winning the Champions League, which was just immense last season. Um, I think that's a Champions League campaign that I will never forget in my life just because of how uh, incredible Real Madrid were in, in coming back from, mm. from, you know, the jaws of defeat. The fact that they pulled off so many comebacks was remarkable. But then in the Club World Cup, it's a 5-3 final beating the Asian champions. They beat the African champions en route. But that 5-3 win in the final, remarkable. So fun to watch. Um, but this is just what Real Madrid do. My entire life, all I've known is Real Madrid winning trophies. Um, so none of the surprises me, the dominance. Um, I think that it's been incredible to watch and I'm sure there'll be a lot of happy Real Madrid fans around. Hey, you know what? We live in a TikTok world now, right? <laughs> Everyone thinks new is better. But one thing that's been incredible for me is everybody told me Chouameni is Patrick Vieira now. I'm like, whoa, Modric and Kroos are not going anywhere. And as we've seen, when when he really needs to win, he goes back to what we call in South Africa the Stapuras, the real guys. Kroos, Modric, let's get this thing on and Liverpool aren't going to do anything. No, don't worry about it. Now, from a club that is achieving at the very highest level worldwide, a club that is struggling to stay in La Liga. In the relegation zone is Valencia, and they have just appointed Ruben Baraja as the new manager, replacing Gennaro Gattuso. What do we think about this appointment? Listen, uh, for old heads like me, we remember a time when this great club was winning with him uh, at the centre of it. He a former captain. He led uh, the brilliant David Albalda, Rufete, uh, Vicente. This was a great team. And, you know, something that people may not realise is they had the world record transfer and the best midfielder in the world not so long ago with uh, the brilliant guy the, the legendary uh, guys came in there to, you know we're talking about a massive institution here which i feel has got it wrong for one reason is that valencia in spain is a unique region now of course the football club is unique is you have to understand the culture before the football club it doesn't work the other way around the only guy and he's from madrid is rafa benitez he got it right and once he got it right and he humbled himself to the culture, well, it was off to the races. It was UEFA Cup titles, it was two La Liga titles, and the rest is history, you know. It's brilliant to have a son of the soil back. I hope he brings that back, because I think uh, Valencia, much like Liverpool for 20 years, is bring somebody like Jurgen Klopp, who understands the culture, feels the people, and this, uh, you know, it's it's dormant. It's a dormant giant, and they're ready to, to win, in my opinion, if they get the culture right. Yeah, because they haven't been outside of La Liga since 1987, and currently they are in that dreaded drop zone. I'm um, just looking at some of their numbers now. Um, they lost seven of their eight games after the World Cup break, but already the new manager has managed to get that first victory, and against Real Sociedad, no less. 
Yeah, and we've all watched Associate oh. this season. They've been incredible. They've been one of the best teams to watch in the Liga. So, yeah, we hope that things turn around for Valencia because, as you were saying, growing up, Valencia was one of the biggest teams in Spain. Um, a couple of the Liga titles, third place finishers, um, some really high profile players like Pablo Aymar, yeah. remember? John Carew. I John mean, Carew. Talking about. So, it's a, it's a great club, a massive club in Spain um, that does not deserve to be where they are right now. Karim Benzema, he has now equaled the great Raul for all time La Liga goals. A second still behind Cristiano Ronaldo, but 230 for Real Madrid. He is a legend at that club. Yeah, I mean, absolute legend. I think that I will put my hand up and say that even I was surprised by how he sort of. Um, took on the mantle, took over the mantle after Ronaldo left in 2018. I did not see that coming, like this, the level of performances and the consistency. I think prior to Ronaldo leaving, um, Benzema had scored 20 plus league goals just twice in his career. And he's now done that three times consecutively. Um, he is on course for potentially another 20 goal season. Um, yeah, just a, an amazing player and really sort of grab things by the scruff of the neck and, and has carried Real Madrid forward. Um, La Liga titles, the Champions League, yeah, a spectacular player and I think most people always thought he was sort of underrated, um, so it's nice to see him get the credit that he deserves. Cause and he, has a Ballon d'Or now to his Ballon name as well. Yeah, He does and, and you, you know what's nice about him is it doesn't often happen in football as much as we think is the wunderkind who delivers on the promise. Uh, we remember him at Lyon before he went to Real Madrid and like you said, I mean Gareth Bale, it was the Gareth Bale and Ronaldo show for, for however long. but. But he's delivering on that promise and I think it's just a great story you know he's from like true poverty and he's just come through it all and, and relatively speaking held his composure almost in like a LeBron way where Kareem's not doing too much I'm just playing football I'll see you guys later and, and it, it's a great story more than anything else so an, a legend a certified legend now. yeah someone who was happy to give the, the spotlight or allow other players to have the spotlight at Real Madrid for so many years um, you never saw him complaining and since Ronaldo's left and since Benzema has taken over, um, he's, he's always been very nice when he's spoken about his former colleagues. He's yeah. just said like, yeah, it's just my turn now. And I think that that's something that you have to respect about Benzema is that he was happy to let other players shine. Um, but now that it's his time, he's really just been... Also, shout out to the Tupac outfit that he wore <laughs> Pete uh, for the Ballon d'Or, you know what I'm saying? So he's the man as well. So. The, only, the only thing to rival his goal-scoring ratio yeah. is his swag oh. on the gram. I mean, this guy, I'm, so no, I'm sure he has a full-time videographer. <laughs> yeah. It must be. Oh, of course. Because it's music video level. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about the league leaders now, Barcelona. Synonymous with beautiful attacking football, but it's actually their defence that has caught the eye. In 23 games, it's their lowest uh, amount of goals conceded, just eight. That is superb. It is phenomenal. You, you know, again, it comes back to me um, that they have another legend who has stayed with them. When you think of uh, Busquets, again, was happy to give the credit to, to former number six and eight, but now you can see because you know, often in football, how I tell that the defense uh, or, or things are working is that the defenders aren't making last-ditch tackles. They're basically intercepting. That means someone in front of them is doing the screening job. And, and those legs are old now. Busquets is old, but the timing sensational. And I think he still wears the same shorts from his first game. Never dirty. Never <laughs> dirty. He knows exactly where to be. And, and that puts people like uh, Kunde and Arujo in terrific positions. Is that they're never making last-ditch tackles. It's basically intercepting and getting things going. I give more credit to Busquets than anybody else, to be honest with you. So here's a question for you. Uh, are we ageist? Because now we've talked about Busquets, who's doing well, Karim Benzema as well, Modric um, a little bit earlier on. Footballers are looking after their bodies better right now. The science has evolved. Um, in other sports, Lewis Hamilton, for example, the age that he's at and still achieving. Um, that's a big conversation to have. We assume that once someone is 33, that's it for them, 34, hang up your boots. But the players we mentioned throughout this discussion uh, on today's episode have been closer to 40 than they are 30. Yeah, I remember growing up and thinking when a player hit 30 that it was sort yeah. of the start of yeah. the end. And I yeah. would get really, I remember being really sad when Messi turned 30, um, thinking that <laughs> it was done. <laughs> and after that, he's won, I think, a couple more Ballon d'Ors, a World Cup, a Copa yes. America. Yeah. He's just gotten better. And I think that that's where like dieting, nutrition comes into it. I think these players take care of themselves and um, they have great teams behind them and they are able to, to play for, for longer. But back to that Barcelona defending point, I think that 
The way we speak about defending has sort of changed in recent years. And Barcelona do a lot of their defending with the ball, which basically means that if they have possession, they can't concede. And they have, I think, on average, around 60% possession a game the season in La Liga, which means that the other team doesn't have the ball, which means it's very difficult for them to score. Um, Barcelona win a lot of their tackles up the pitch, closer to the opposition box. Um, a lot of teams in La Liga like to play out from the back. Xavi has a one-on-one -on -one sort of system or like a man-marking system. When they try and play out the box, he's got a player for each player that they are trying to play through. Um, they win the ball high up and then they close. Often they'll score a goal from that turnover, um, but it just means that the, the opposition doesn't get close to their goal. Um, and obviously that's a great way to um, not prevent, or to not concede goals. Yeah. It's such an interesting point though, because we saw pretty much the opposite in the World Cup. Spain, for example, uh, had the highest possession stats and the most number of passes. I think it was a new record for them. And yet still lost out. A nation like Morocco, yeah. who thrived on very little possession and yet made it all the way through to the, the semis, finishing fourth. It's the beauty of this game. Uh, I think we spoke about it a little bit ago. You, you, you know, Atletico Madrid are going to do it their way. It's going to get them to titles. And Pep's going to do it his way in the past. And, and Xavi is starting to... to, to it, it's Pep 2.0, right? We, we can see what he's doing, the, the gag and press, as you say. It's the beauty of this game. You, you know, I'm loving it. Sociedad are doing it their own way. The, the great David Silva's cooking now. You, you know, it, there's so many ways. I just love football for this. Is there isn't one way, one way to win, and it's fantastic. I love. It. Yeah, and I think you have to give big credit to to Stegen, who has been, I think, in the best form of his of his career, at least since joining Barcelona. Um, the perfect goalkeeper for the way that Xavi wants to play. So yeah, it's been sensational. This chat has been sensational, but that's all <laughs> we have time for. Kurt Buckerfield and Mbulelo Tinta. Great chatting La Liga with you guys. Thanks, Jules. Good stuff, Jules. Next up, we chat to Salta Vigo defender Joseph Idu. Joseph Idu, welcome to La Liga Loca Africa. So great to have you on the show today. So, first things first, happy El Centenario. Please tell us about the proud celebrations of Salta Vigo's 100 year anniversary. Yeah, for me, it's an, 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 an honor to me because I've not been in a club where the club is celebrating the anniversary, so for me, it's, it's something great and it's like I'm looking forward to it and it's like opportunity. Could you please tell us more about your childhood in Ghana and how did you first get involved in football? Yeah, my, my, my childhood in Ghana, oh, it's like the community I, I live in is called Tema. It's a lot, of, a lot of young guys, so when it's time, we just go to the, we have a, a small field close to the community, so we just go we play, we play, but my professional career started from school, when I was in school. Yeah. What was the process like for you moving from playing in Ghana to then playing professionally in Europe? Yeah, it was a nice, a nice experience, but it's different, you know, when you are in, like, I played in Ghana when I went to Sweden. It's like the, the system was different, so I have to adapt to the system. So it was a, a bit different. How do you adjust to the cultural differences when you first moved to Spain to play for Salta Vigo? Yeah. yeah, first of all, it's like the language. It was it was difficult for me, but I got the people around me to help me when I came. There were guys in the club. So when they could say something and I don't understand, they, they tried to help me. And they also gave me a teacher for a couple of times. So. They, they try to help me on the field and off the field. What has been your biggest challenge playing in La Liga, both on and off the pitch? Both and off the field, I think. Yeah, first when I come, when I came here, the ad adaptation uh, on the field of play and off the field. You know, sometimes you meet you meet some of the fans, and you know they, they are happy that you are here, the way you play. But you also want to express yourself, to talk to them, but. It was a bit complicated, yeah. How has your experience playing for Salta Vigo differed from your previous experiences playing for other teams? Yeah, in Spain, in Celta, Celta is a big club compared to the clubs that I've played. And in Spain, it's a big and matured uh, league than the leagues that I played. What is your favorite memory playing for Salta Vigo so far? My favorite memory, my favorite memory is the the weird one. 
Yeah, my first season when I came here, the last game against uh, Espanol. Because that game, when Celta lose, we're going to relegation. It was a weird moment, but for me, it was something like a motivational moment. Your favorite Spanish cuisine is? <laughs> yeah, already, you already know. I like polpo and samborinha. Samborinha. <laughs> what advice do you have for young players in Africa who dream of playing professionally in Europe? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Just, I would, yeah, I would just say they shouldn't give up on their dream. They should continue to work hard and they should aim high. What are your goals for the future, both individually and for Salta Vigo as a club? Yeah, my previous club that I played, we qualified. We played in uh, Europa, Europa League, then we qualified for Champions League, and then I came here. So my dream is for Celta to also qualify for Europa League. Yeah. And my dream is also to play in one of the big clubs in the world. Joseph Aidu, thank you so much for your time. It's been great having you join us on La Liga Loca Africa. Now it's time for the ultimate test of La Liga knowledge in our fan quiz. We've got some great prizes up for grabs as well. The winner gets a official La Liga Puma winter ball as well as a Celta Vigo shirt. The loser doesn't go home empty-handed though. We have a La Liga African gift pack for them. Now let's meet our contestants. Please introduce yourself, lady and gentlemen. Let's start with you, ladies first. Okay, so my name is Wuxie Bale. I'm from Madrid and my favorite team is Barcelona. What about you? Uh, my name is Bonga and my favorite team is Atletico Madrid. Hoo-hoo, double Bs going up for the big prize. Hey, hey. Let me just remind you guys how this quiz works. So I'm gonna ask a question. If you think you know the answer, shout out your name. Okay. And then wait for me to acknowledge and you'll give the answer. If you get the answer wrong, I'm gonna give your opponent the opportunity to answer that very same question. Okay. After five questions, if somehow you are tied, we will then go to sudden death. We have a special tiebreaker question to separate you because we have two wonderful prizes and we need a winner today. Okay. Ready? Yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> let's start with the first question. Which team has won the most La Liga titles? Bukle. Bukle? Real Madrid. That is correct. <laughs> yes, Bukle, one for the ladies. Okay. Who is the all-time top scorer in La Liga history? Bukle. <laughs> Ah, what a boucle! Lionel Messi. Yeah, and she would get it because of Barcelona, of course. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Bonga, come on, you gotta, you gotta. Yeah, 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 come on. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Make this competitive. Which team won the 2020 21 La Liga title? Bonga. Let it go? Yes. Ah, oh, okay. 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. Final question. This is it. Are you ready? Yeah. Do we need to dust off the... Are we yeah. nervous? Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's go. What was the name of the stadium where FC Barcelona played before moving to the Camp Nou? Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah, we trip you all up big with this one. <laughs> the new Camp? <laughs> <laughs> Changing the order of the words will not get the right answer. <laughs> nice try, though, Bonga. Are we forfeiting? Yes, no, I also forgot the name. Okay, <laughs> I, I never knew the name. The answer is Les Cortes. Les Cortes, I don't know how you pronounce it, but yeah, it's very tough. Okay, so that is the end of our quiz, and that means we, ding, 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 have a winner, and it's bootleg, two, one. Hey. Can we please get a congratulatory handshake? Oh. Well, <laughs> a show of good sportsmanship. Yeah. Yeah, try, congratulations. <laughs> Doing it for the ladies. Yeah. Yay. Well done, Bukle. And she wins, don't forget, a fantastic prize of Celta Vigo jersey and the official La Liga Winter Puma Ball. Congratulations, Bukle. Oh, <laughs> That's it with the fan quiz. We have a big winner, Bukle, in the house. Bonga gets his La Liga African goodie bag as well. And for all of you, that's where we have to leave today's episode. It's all we have for you in this episode of La Liga Loca Africa, where we brought you the best of La Liga insights from an African perspective. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. That's all we have for this episode. We'll see you next time on La Liga Loca Africa.